All right. Welcome to the CES meeting. We have two items on the agenda. Uh, the first of which Bradley has brought up that Node is moving away from, uh, from uh, well, I'll, I'll allow Bradley to introduce. And, um, and then when Nicolo and folks and I, uh, uh, arrive, we have a postponed conversation about records, tuples, and boxes. Um, Bradley, can, would you like is, to? Is, is Matthew back? Is Matthew here? Um, Matthew is not present. Okay. So we can't have the conversation we wanted yet. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Bradley. Sure. So, so Nodes TSC has been moving forward with trying to figure out what we want to do uh, with regards to what we call the primordials usage. Primordials in Node are essentially a sanitized copy of the common intrinsics you find in JavaScript, the language itself, uh, not necessarily Node's implementation of its runtime. Uh, these are just about basic JavaScript utilities like array prototype map, um, hoisting it, uncurrying it so that uh, you can call it on an arbitrary object without having to use property delegation and that property delegation is susceptible to concerns about pollution and mutation of the globals. Um, so there's some problems with doing this. Um, we can't take Sess's approach of making everything frozen uh, because people are mutating globals for various reasons. Um, we have faced for very, a few for, for various, performance for, problems. For various, various good reasons or just for various entrenched re reasons that you can't change? I, I, would, uh, I, I can answer for that. Uh, they are good. Go they are good reasons. <laughs> um, Be, being able think, to shim for the future is good. OK, shimming, shimming I certainly agree. That's, that, one's a, that one's a valid use so, case. So we actually do have the frozen intrinsics flag which does something basically what SAS does. And you can preload stuff before that, that flag. Um, okay. So shimming is not actually a concern. Um, Great. Concerns are coming from people intentionally mutating these for observability purposes. Uh, they're mutating things in order to manipulate parts of other people's libraries. Um, and this is widespread enough that it is not practical for us to ever default to frozen intrinsics being the default. Being the uh, default, okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have expected that, okay. Uh, we already do support a flag that does freeze them. Um, but for Node's core, that means that we have to write against a ecosystem and JavaScript language where we assume that they are mutable because it's mm -hmm. not the default. Mm -hmm. That means instead of calling a variable myarray.map, for example, right. you have to call right. a primordials, which is a uh, injected lexical variable, primordials.arrayprototypemap, and then get pass the function myarray, and then all the other parameters that you want. Mm -hmm. um, this causes problems for maintainability. It causes problems for performance. It causes problems for memory usage. Um, could, you explain really could, you, could, you, could you explain each of those? Sure. So for maintainability, a lot of people who write JavaScript are uncomfortable using these functions. Um, and so you see collaborator drop off. People have a lot of back and forth on peer, PRs to make sure that these are used rather than the globals. Mm -hmm. um, it is non-trivial to do this for a variety of JavaScript built-ins. In particular, anything using symbols is extremely difficult to avoid. So we have to basically recreate iterators and things. And doing so requires multiple levels of indirection. Uh, if we want to use, for example, for of. Uh, so we don't use for of, we don't do array destructuring, 
we don't do a variety of things and we have a bunch of lint rules on it. Um, <laughs> doing so prevents basically people from landing PRs because of the extreme dialect required in order just to ship basic functionality that isn't susceptible to mutated globals. Um, so that's one. Uh, the other is performance. Due to indirection and not using JavaScript built-ins the way that they are written in the spec, that means we have to wrap them in other functions. Array prototype map, for example, has to uh, what we call uncurry this. Uncurry right. this basically takes your prototype method and changes it to accept a first parameter being the this value. Um, mm -hmm. Doing so, uh, it does have a hot path in V8 now because Node mentioned yeah. it being problematic. Um, that hot path is not hot enough for it. Even, even with a compiler optimization, it is still a performance hit to use. How much? It is never going to be fast enough. How, how much? Uh, of a I think we're at 10%, 10% with the hot path on. That seems consistent with our experience. Um, so you, you get a 10% degradation on every intrinsic function call, essentially, um, doing this. Um, so no amount of hot pathing will fix that 10%. 10% is the hot path. That is after we saw a five times slowdown without the hot path. So from 500% to 10%, that's, that's what we reclaimed. Um, and then for memory usage, uh, there's a lot more allocations due to the wrapping and it makes a lot of GC happen because you're creating extra <laughs> arguments objects and things. Uh, in, in particular, we can't use the default arguments object. We have to do other things because people can mutate stuff and that's no good. Um, and so we're sorry, basically that's creating that's a bunch of customized objects. I'm sorry, explain again about the arguments object. The arguments right. object has always been extremely weird. Uh, uh, so when we do uncurry this and stuff like that, we have to be careful in how we actually propagate the parameters around. Um, in particular, we can't do things like rest parameters because they're sub subject to simple iterator uh, injections. So we have to go and manually uh, oh. write up object literals and things. Um, <laughs> so we make a bunch of garbage that we know we're going to throw away immediately. So almost every prototype function call creates an extra object creates extra properties for every parameter. So the more parameters you have, the slower it becomes. Um, and it's, it's just bad for memory usage. Um, but did we that have, have anything, least, sorry, did, did that have anything to do with the arguments object or does that just have to do uh, with- Not the argument type, it's just arguments. Oh, okay, in general. okay, okay. Um, so even with all these problems, we have been landing and enforcing usage as best we can for Node's core, but doing so uh, is not worthwhile potentially. So there are arguments coming from Node's technical steering committee that maybe we should do something else and perhaps even stop trying to be robust against mutation of JavaScript uh, intrinsics. In particular, um, things that propagate themselves as secure runtimes like Dino are not robust against these. They are also susceptible to these kind of injection vectors, usually for various means. Uh, but on the counter side, browsers, at least for JavaScript, intrinsics are robust against it. They're not robust entirely against mutating jo um, against mutating the host provided primitives. Um, and it's a complicated situation there. But yes, so that's the discussion we're having. And I believe we have a meeting set up for next week in one of the issue threads to discuss it. 
We had a convert. Well, we have um, from the last plenary, we had a conversation about exposing the intrinsics directly. Um, maybe there's a possibility that we could ask for 262 to provide the uncurried this versions of some of the implementations without the necessity of having a, 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 a wrapper around them. That's a really good idea. Um, so we, I'm receiving this information, but in a way this like, we're not, I, I'm not sure how, uh, I'm not sure that this, this is, this is interesting. Um, I think that it's, it's not existential. It's concerning perhaps. Um, but, uh, the, the, the way I'm receiving it was mostly is that we're in the process of getting as more strict with CES itself and the performance feedback is, is, is good to hear. And it's also good to hear that, um, that node, uh, that we can credit node for motivating the performance improvements to V8 that we are no doubt enjoying with the CES shim today. Um, uh, as, as we go and use uncurry this a lot more with an open PR we haven't yet landed. Uh, it, it might be good for us to do uh, uh, some checking before we land <laughs> to see how, how much worse the performance gets, given that it's not security critical for us because we're freezing primordials. So one thing to note is even with uncurry this, it's insufficient for a variety of types, especially maps and sets and most things with protocols based upon symbols. Um, so even with those, you have to write a arcane dialect of JavaScript in order to not be susceptible to third party uh, mutation. I'm very interested in becoming fluent in this arcane dialect, although we no. probably will not speak it <laughs> in CES yeah. even, since we don't have to. <laughs> Dan, you've got a hand up. Uh, yeah, I think this difficulty, uh, you know, it's also been faced by uh, JavaScript implementers who try to implement built-ins in JavaScript and, and get these same issues, um, which they can solve with magic. But, uh, you know, this is a recurring issue that lots of people face. And I think we should ideally make a language kind of proposal that solves it in a more comprehensive way than adding these different kinds of primitives uh, to, to do little little bits of it. Uh, I don't know exactly what that would look like, but I feel like there must be some way to solve it that where you can write something more like normal looking code and- I, 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 can propose, um, I can propose that it might look something like more constructor methods that are non-polymorphic, for example like an array dot uh, array constructor dot map um, that would receive an array as its first argument. That still doesn't help uh, pr protect against somebody modifying ar array, replacing those things. Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing that Jordan is about to propose with the, um, you know, the, the, the separate enumeration of all of the primordials, uh, like you say, if you enhance that to provide uh, uncurried this forms of all of the, the, the this sensitive primordials. I think that's that's a very natural enhancement of what Jordan's already planning, and that would uh, certainly wouldn't be notationally natural, but it would solve the rest of these problems. Yeah, I think um, the the difficulty with dealing with the dialect shows that it would be nice if we could think of a more comprehensive solution than just this low level exposing what the actual primordials are. Um, and I know so there's- there are know, alternatives. Yeah, sorry. I'm oh, Bradley. Um, so just because we're talking about getting rid of primordials doesn't mean we're trying to make node less robust in order to regain these performance features. There are a variety of alternatives um, from lightweight membranes to other stuff like that, but essentially um, running uh, our code, which is trying to be robust against 
essentially third party code, um, we need some level of robustness through primordials, it's done by dispatch. If we do something like a lightweight membrane where we copy across all the serializable properties and send it to another uh, realm, that's another thing we could do. It is actually enough of a performance problem that that might be okay. Um, uh, we would at least get our, uh, we'd get our maintainability back because we do have perf problems and memory problems. If you're getting it, if, if right now you're, you're, you're worried about a 10% overhead, uh, doing anything th like this through membranes, I would think you would, you would be worse than that. Uh, through a proxy-based membrane, correct. We are talking more about destructuring out and repopulating objects uh, only with well-known properties. So okay, not so, reflectively. Think, okay, so I don't understand. So we would not be using object hooks. Uh, we, we're not gonna talk about the object being, you know, having traps for Git, set and stuff like that. Really for nodes APIs, we are only concerned with, if you pass us a value, can we pull off the properties we need? We are not concerned if you mutate it generally. So we're not trying to replace anything with a proxy and see what, what kind of, object manipulation is actually going on. We're just trying to pull data off of it and potentially put data back onto it in well-known locations. Uh, may, maybe offline after the meeting, could you show a piece of sample code? Because I just, I'm having trouble imagining what the code would look like. It's just like destructuring. Um, we're, we're not using proxy at all. We're, we're not talking about using proxy. It's just like you call fs.read file. It has an options bag associated with it. You just read those properties eagerly and potentially populate that options bag afterward if it does do a mutation to it. But never um, consulting the original object at runtime, uh, and thus avoiding. Correct. Yeah. So we would do it all eagerly, uh, sanitize it, pass it to the other realm. The other realm can manipulate it however it wants. And then it feeds back just the property alterations we do. We do those unconditionally. Um, I think uh, it might be a good time to, to kick off. Oh, well, I, we don't have Matthew. So this is, pro is, it is still not the ideal time to have a conversation about records, tuples, and boxes. Um, but uh, I want to make sure that we make the time available if, um, if there's interest in having um, a, a preliminary conversation. Uh, otherwise, I'm fine with having this. Uh, um, I'm fine having uh, continuing in this topic. Uh, to answer Daniel, uh, last time we talked about scheduling this, I shot out an email looking to find a time when we had a quorum with both Mark and Matthew and um, and yourself and Nicolo. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and Matthew has, uh, has, has the best articulated um, material to, d to discuss for the proposal. And Matthew is off getting married and he'll be back soon, um, presumably. Uh, we just uh, haven't been in touch with him. Can we discuss things with Mark since Nicolo and Mark and I are all here? We've, uh, been, we've been waiting on this conversation for really long, for, for yeah. some weeks now, sorry. Yeah, so, let, so let, me, let me start by um, giving some thoughts. Um, the, um, you know, I, I, th I think we've made it clear that I want to revisit all this once uh, Matthew is available. Um, but the, my, all of my problems are around box. Um, and it strikes me that the conversation around box is kind of sandwiched in an uncomfortable middle. Um, the, on the one hand, there's the idea that um, uh, records and tuples as, as object types could just contain normal mutable objects directly with no box. And the objection to that is uh, not enough notation at the boundary between the immutable types and the mutable types. 
And on the other hand, there's the primitive uh, records and tuples um, uh, with no box, but with um, symbols as weak map keys, where you have to make the transition by looking them up in a weak map. And the, the, the objection to that is too much notation around the uh, transition from immutable to mutable. And so there, there's this at the, you know, there, there's this too little notation so solution with no boxes. Uh, and there's this too much notation solution with no boxes. And the argument for boxes is to try to hit this, this middle uh, at the cost of introducing all the problems with boxes. So my position is that, you know, either of the extremes uh, has virtues I'm comfortable with. And, uh, and the, 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 I don't, I don't find the middle I don't find the middle motivating, and I find that the that, that it's certainly not motivating enough to introduce all the problems of box. So we, you know, we didn't propose uh, no uh, direct objects and records and tuples to the to the committee because the champion group is really not in favor of that uh, for the for this. Not an activity. <laughs> we did propose uh, showing uh, you know symbols as weak map keys. Uh, and we got this negative committee response. So, uh, you know, at a, at a high level, I uh, don't understand what's wrong with the form of argument that these two things don't work and we're trying to find a middle point. Um, so I'd, I'd really prefer to dig into the, the problems with Fox because I think we were getting somewhere with the identity of the list objects with these, you know, with this predicate where, where they would all have type of object. We would have a predicate to see whether something deeply contains an, an object. And uh, and you would also have predicates for like record dot is record and tuple dot is tuple. Uh, the only the 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 sticking point seemed to be this what is the prototype? and you characterize the prototype as dynamically scoped. I think when, when Nicola and I were, were thinking about that further, our analysis was more like, well, this is just as dynamically scoped as uh, primitive wrappers. It's like quite similar. Um, yeah, I, 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 so I, 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 th I think that's right. I, I talked that out with, with uh, Matthew some, and I think you're right about that, that it's not that, that it's, it's treating dot as a, uh, you know, it's treating the dot um, the way primitives treat dot as a special form in the code uh, that's in the code with the dot in it that's using the realm of that code. Uh, and it's a little bit weird that it's doing that on objects, whereas till now it's only done that with primitives, but it's not dynamic scoping. I agree with that. Dynamic scoping is when you're making a transition uh, to calling a function where the function is, um, uh, is sensitive to something implicit about the caller of the function. And there's no, there's no function being called here. So, I, mean, so to, I, 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 I am clear, satisfied about that. You can, you can access this without a literal dot. For example, if you call reflect dot get prototype of, one of these things, then it'll also be this kind of context dependent. But conceptually, you could think of that as having like two objects literally in the code, similar to how primitives would have that. Okay, hold on a second. Let's, let's be very careful about this. Um, if I'm executing code in realm A and I'm calling a reflect dot two prototype of where the where let's say the 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 two prototype of method is a is a method from realm B, I would expect the prototype to be looked up according to realm B, because the thing being in the the it's the two prototype of method itself that's being invoked that would that would be bringing the, the realm get with it. the get prototype of method yeah I, that's the behavior that I would expect as well. Nicolo's okay. prototype this in Spider Monkey. Nicolo, is that how your prototype would behave? Uh, I'm not sure because I didn't really check yet how to make it work like across different realms. Uh, but it's 
definitely something that I will check soon and I will tell you like how it's possible to implement it. Yeah, so, so I think that the only place where uh, you need to explain special magic is the syntax itself, dot and square bracket. Okay, now you've, you've convinced me now. Uh, so, uh, okay, so what problems do we see with this identityless objects approach with box, given all that? Just, sorry, I'm, I think that the identityless object discussion and box discussion are not really like that much related. I mean, we can either have boxes with or without identity identityless objects. No, the, the, the problem yes. is that the, um, uh, if records and tuples are primitives, uh, if the primitives can in turn contain powerful things, then there's a tremendous amount of existing code that's broken. If records and tuples are objects, then objects being a structure that contains powerful things does not break all of that existing code. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this was specifically about older membrane code that we won't be able to update in the next couple of years. That it's, we not just, it's, make... it's, just a, it's not just membranes, just a lot, lot of things that walk, but, but membranes certainly as well. I, a I a mean, lot of things it's... that walk object structure and assume that if, the, if they see something primitive, they can just let it through without having to do a further walk. So it does appeal to me intuitively because you should walk into these things. And in most circumstances, you should treat records and tuples similarly to objects. So, uh, so let's dig into what the problems are because you previously were saying that having box together with having, uh, together with having, um, you know, as opposed to these more extreme options was, was problematic. So I want to understand what's problematic about this approach. Okay, so first of all, let me, let me say that uh, at Agoric, we're doing something like records and tuples in our distributed object system. We call, we call them copy records and copy arrays, um, but they're basically uh, objects that um, are, um, are, are frozen and uh, only contain string named uh, own enumerable data properties uh, and therefore are suitable for being passed by copy when communicating between, um, between, co between VATs and between machines. Uh, so those are the, the passed by copy um, uh, data structures, containers. Uh, primitives, we just pass by copy directly. Uh, and we, um, uh, in our distributed object semantics, we do treat the copy arrays and copy records as having um, uh, no comparable identity. We understand that because of where we're standing, we have to create a two level semantics because at the JavaScript level, of course, they do have identity, uh, but that's what we're doing. Um, and in the context of that, uh, the, um, these things just contain both mutable and immutable things freely, and we have a predicate uh, is only data that uh, verifies that they transitively contain only immutable pass by copy things. Um, and that's been a very natural programming model. It's th that very natural programming model does emerge from the way we were doing distributed programming in the E language. Um, and I just, having experienced that again, and in this time really with you know, industrial scale um, uh, and very pressing security concerns and robustness concerns, uh, I, I, I am, you know, and having been exposed to the arguments for box, I'm just not finding the arguments that, there's, that there needs to be additional notation at the transition from immutable to mutable, I'm not finding that motivating. I'm not finding a case in our code where it would have helped. Okay, I feel like we've gone from a categorical error to more of you know, a question of, of I don't wanna say taste because this is, you know, this is more deep than taste. Uh, it has a lot of implications, the notation. 
Uh, but I feel like we're not at a point right now when we're seeing like, okay, with this identity subjects approach, we're seeing this kind of fatally bad thing. It's just, there's some design decisions that we should justify and, and consider alternatives to. Is that accurate? Uh, with regard to the objection I just raised, that is accurate. Uh, and with regard to deep, deeper objections about what problems box itself introduces, um, uh, I, I really want to postpone that until Matthew's back. I'm sorry, but but I just okay. uh, Matthew so not... Mar Matthew articulated a lot of a lot of questions about that and concerns about that much better than I had. Okay, so we're not ready to rule out that there are these deeper concerns, but we don't. None of us here have them at, at top of mind right now. So that's we correct. Can go on to the. Uh... But, but but I would like to be. I would like to understand what the case is that uh, as objects, not as primitives. As primitives, maybe there was more of a justification for wanting to have a notational boundary. But as identityless objects, I would like to understand what the argument is that we need a notation boundary at the transition from immutable to mutable, as opposed to just a predicate that something is transitively immutable. So the, the argument for this is another experience-based argument. And uh, I think um, actually when, when Robin Ricard can come to another one of these meetings then he can also speak to this. Uh, but there, there are a lot of these immutable data structure libraries popular in JavaScript today. And users frequently report this issue of having trouble understanding where the boundary is between the mutable and immutable parts. That's why we're proposing to make it explicit. I see. Could you, could you, it would be useful offline to send some pointers to some of those uh, discussions. I mean, are there like is, GitHub issue threads or something where this, where this arose? Uh, I, I can take a quick look around right now. Nicolo, do you have anything to add on this topic? Um, not really. Uh, no. Okay. Cause I certainly, I mean, I very, I'm, I'm a coming, coming to this issue from a point of, extreme sympathy and support for trying to make programming less hazardous. And if the lack of a notational boundary is introducing a hazard that a notational boundary actually fixes, I'd really like to understand that because trying to reproduce the argument just from what I know in my own head, I wasn't able to do it. To do it. I don't see what the hazard is. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're trying to create space for this exact debate. Uh, I just accidentally sent it to Chris instead of everyone. Okay, so it's it's issue two, 206 on the record and tuple issue tracker. We're, okay. we're trying to um, make it so that we, we call it automatic or implicit boxing, where you just can include references to, to objects. So uh, one one hazard that comes up in any kind of sample code that you try to write is if you try to make a structure that's a bunch of nested records, you might just forget one of the hash signs somewhere and make it contain an object when you really wanted it to contain a record. We talked about previously having this be context sensitive, the syntax meaning, and came yeah. to the conclusion that that's a bad idea because- I agree, I, I agree that that's a bad idea. You agree that this is kind of a, uh, a typing hazard? This is, this is I, a pretty minor point. I'm not sure if this should be the decisive one. Uh, I, I, I see the point you're making and, uh, and I see also why the point comes up in your context and does not come up in the agoric distributed object system. So that's, that's interesting. Um, uh, uh, so yes, good, thank you. That, 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 that does help. The reason it doesn't come up for us is that uh, in order for something to be passable, there are severe constraints. Basically, a passable thing can only contain other passable things. And passable things have to fall into one of a number of categories. And just a plain object that's not frozen and that's not anything special just won't be considered passable. And when you try to pass it, you'll get an error. So, 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 so the, the, hazard oh, that you're, the hazard that you're raising is for us prevented at a different level. So that's interesting. That would explain why I have not encountered it. Uh, yeah, so my understanding is that this hazard occurs commonly in systems like immutable JS or, or Immer, but uh, other people can speak more to practical experience with those. Uh, 
maybe people who are not in this in this meeting today. Uh, I, I haven't found documentation about that. The thread that I linked is it's pretty long, and I'm not sure which post might be the most kind of insightful. Um, you know, people are arguing back and forth. It's not just a, this isn't necessarily a uh, clear cut, obvious thing. Okay. Um, and, and the example really, the example and why Agoric doesn't suffer from it really does help me think about this. So that, I appreciate that. Okay. Well, I feel like we made a bunch of progress on this topic. Uh, my current thought is that we, the champion group, should maybe not land it, but uh, kind of lean towards uh, the um, identityless object approach. Um, and to, to resolve the issues that, that Mark has raised about not just compatibility with membranes, but compatibility with any code that needs to know whether to recurse through things. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we should uh, uh, continue discussing this issue, but it sounded like you found the example compelling. I do find the example, uh, not sure compelling is the right word, but it's, um, I, I, I understand the motivation. I see that the motivation is valid. Does, does, that, you know, I'm, I'm holding forth on, on I, I just don't want to imply that I agree with the conclusion because of the uh, objections to box that I have not been raising during this meeting, but, but which I, I want to discuss when, when Matthew's back. Um, but, but with regard to explaining what the motivation is, I think you've succeeded at doing that. Okay, that's great. Uh, I'm happy we were able to allocate this time slice and I think we can probably go on from, from records and tuples and resume this in a future week. Okay, good. Maybe we can discuss realm name bike shedding if we have extra time. <laughs> uh, Leo, your, your ears must be burning. So right. <laughs> How, how 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 goes the the bike shed? Oh, it's just like another bike shed. Uh, we've got some uh, interesting uh, feedback. I talked to to some people internally, um, and I also uh, there is one comment there in the bike shed thread that I uh, that comes from uh, Massiej from on the WebKit team which I believe uh, that feedback has some like background from internal discussion. I, it's just assumption, I'm not even asking if this is true or not, but I think it should be taken in consideration as Marcia just suggesting to get, uh, to, to use a, like a, not a simple name to avoid the cuteness of uh, the new name for the Realms API. I think it's valid to, to consider that as well. Um, I have to say, still, my like my goal today is to to just get the API ready and move this forward. Um, I don't mind too much on the name, and uh, but I uh, we yet to need to find like the the, the winning one. The, the concerns about uh, having the Realms API that you raised like from the Chrome team seems to be also valid from uh, the WebKit side. I haven't confirmed anything with Mozilla, but I would probably expect Mozilla confirming that thing. With... What, 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 what are, can you state those, what those concerns are? Um, so in implementation aspect, uh, Realm is also used for something else. Uh, and that like the API constructor, the name used for the API constructor currently uh, brings a little bit of confusion when talking about one thing or another with the same name. So, when you, so the, the thing that you're referring to is the, is the use of the term realm by the standard? Uh, 
there's two Leo's talking about two separate things. Um, that weren't, I don't think, clearly delineated. The first thing is that, and this came directly from me, um, so I'll own it. I suspect that part of the reason that the VA team themselves are pushing back on capital R realm is because D8, you're all familiar with that, right? Has a capital R realm and has had a capital R realm for forever. Oh, I see it. I, I, I can remember. And that thing is relied upon in their own testing, not only in their own testing, but test 262 relies on it for realm creation for realm testing. I see. Yeah. Well, they're so not using, is, but it's not realm the constructor. It's it's like realm like a you know, like a math object. Global built in that has a has methods on the side. And you okay. So this is so 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 how many programmers do they expect? use this API and are used to using this name for this API. I mean, this seems like an incredibly obscure thing. So to I, I, that's the, the, part. the other part I, is that the word realm is so, to mean other things in the HTML spec. Well, yeah, I, I really think it's more the second one. I'm really kind of, I don't think we're hearing any like bad faith uh, reasons. I think if they, if they wanted to complain about the D8, conflict then they would then they would complain about it and i think it also has to do with the rejection of the previous realm proposal which didn't have callable boundaries and so the boundary really i i really do want to so wait wait there, there is something else that i uh forgot to mention sorry i, I was just catching this uh, information i was just fetching it uh, there also seems to be like a conflict with this name, not only on D8, as Rick mentioned. Uh, it seems there seems to be an overload uh, in like browser extension contexts, um, at least from the WebKit side. Okay, so 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 could somebody please explain the browser uses of the term realm? I haven't explored uh, too much, but there seems to be an overload, uh, like. The information that I have, like there seems to be an overloaded name in browser extension context. So I believe when you have a context when you're using for browser extensions, you, you might have this name uh, uh, already or something like that. I need to do a role of full investigation on how this actually works um, in the web gates extensions. I'm okay. I didn't do this homework. Um, so at least in the browser extensions I've used, they call it world. Isolated world is the actual term. So I I don't think it'll be productive for us to push back on the need to rename realm. I think we should, in this room, try to come to a group initial consensus about what we want to propose to the community and then post that on the issue and then get feedback from the community. And I think we should do this within a week or so. Um, you know, we're all just trying to unblock this. I think we need a, a proposal that comes from the group, from the, you know, this sort of forms an extended champion group for the proposal. And so if we just say like, okay, we thought about it, we're gonna choose, we wanna move forward with this name. Okay. People can emoji react, but I think leaving, leaving the, we've left the thread open for, for enough time and we can so we can so, the, so the general approach that appeals most to me although i don't I'm not I, I don't I, I can't say that there's a particular name that emerges from it that i love the general approach is the one that chris kowal raised um that we 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 think about um this as part of a naming scheme uh with these you know nested nested containers uh the finest grain being uh, what we currently call the compartment, uh, then uh, the, the thing we currently call the realm, then the thing we currently call the agent, which is probably the single worst name in the universe of, for any of these things, uh, and then the agent cluster. So these are, are four levels of nesting that are reflected in um, you know, spec concepts that are probably going to be reified as APIs and they'll be reified similarly as APIs and they have a strong relationship to each other because a new agent cluster will have an initial agent which will have an initial realm 
which will have an initial compartment. Um, uh, so, uh, so anything that suggests which thing is nested within which thing um, uh, would be wonderful. Okay, is a week a long enough time for someone to propose uh, a naming scheme here? I mean, because we identified the name for the naming scheme some weeks ago. Yeah, there was considerable discussion of naming schemes. Um, And out of which no satisfying feedback even emerged, I think. So, so um, when I was talking to John David Dalton uh, from my team, and uh, we had some discussions where he had like some pretty convincing arguments for um, using a term that actually would fit in a name skin, uh, scheme, but I don't think the name would be very appreciated here. So that's one of the cons, like the name itself, I don't think it's gonna be the most loved, but like he uh, had a good uh, um, convincing argument for using verse, like a constructor named verse. Um, V-E-R-S-E? -E? Yes. So I think that there's a, com I think that it could be compelling to have names like multiverse, universe, ah. globe. And uh, the, uh, for uh, grammar and even mathematical uh, definitions of it, uh, you can get this name scheme like there's technically uh, valid and you can build a scheme over that and make sense for what it does. And you can more operate on this multiverse, yes. Um, I would say that multiverse is the most clear analogy for agent cluster, whereas universe is the most applicable to agent. And I love using globe to imply a unique global. It seems to fit compartment. Um, uh, the... Uh, I don't oh, know. globe for compartment because of a unique global. That's really interesting. I don't remember coming across that before. Uh, for the same reason, we had a, a suggestion for word, but word, it seems like very vague. Well, globe, world, and globe and world are synonyms. Um, I don't love it but it, but it does solve the problem that we don't have a name that stands between global and globe and universe. So, so uh, straw man, straw person, straw men, still men. I, in any case, the uh, um, I propose uh, multiverse for agent cluster, universe for agent, world for realm, and globe for compartment as a coherent nesting naming scheme. So the world would not quite meet the suggestion that, that Mache from, from WebKit made that we should like not try to look for a short, cute term and instead have something longer and more descriptive because this is more like an expert API. But I don't think uh, that's necessarily a fatal constraint. The, the one thing is like world and globe sound like they're the same level of nesting to me. I agree. Yeah. Speak, speak, speaking astronomically, there are, of course, many, many astronomical levels of nesting between a globe or you know planet versus uh, the universe. System. Uh, so, so solar, solar systems, galaxies. Um, uh, if we're going with a, you know multiverse, universe, and globe, galaxy is not terrible. Um, I, so um, I don't I'm think you try to. to I'm gonna to try to set down like some schemes uh, for 
what, what I can extract for that and suggestions based on schemes, but I also gonna uh, bring one of the suggestions based on uh, having the, like the, not a simple name, like a double name constructor. Um, Bradley. So, yeah, I think, I think going straight to astronomy and things like that might not be uh, the best way to do it. Astronomy itself does have this kind of scheme with your idea of your local body and your more remote body. Michael, Michael I think you're muted. Um, so like they have local cluster and things like that. You could also just, you know, tack the word group on top of one to get an arbitrary extra level of nesting and things like that. So <laughs> group is like, also an astronomical term. <laughs> correct, correct. But well, they I mean, do if, use it in order to differentiate things. Well, in, in they the most, also are doing this. Yeah, in the most extreme case, you could say the bottom level is a compartment, and then above that you have a compartment group, and above that you have a compartment group group, and above that you have a compartment group group group. Not a good Let, let's thing not to use that. in practice, but it does actually communicate a hierarchy. Um, I'm going to do some homework reading on taxonomies um, and uh, like going deep on definitions for all of these. I still want to get, uh, I still want to see how I can fit verse or globe or and word on top of it. This seems like for me a little bit more natural, even if with all the other uh, things around it, but I I need to do some homework uh, and come in with like a solid foundation for. What yeah. Do, pe do people react badly to galaxy in the context of, of universe, do. multiverse, and globe? Uh, you know, none of these none of these short names meet the suggestion from Apple to to not have a short, cute name. So then, this is me recognizing like uh, I'm considering something. If we have a solid foundation on this taxonomy like uh if we have a name scheme uh i think this is a, a also a good argument like if we uh mix this all uh this all in a good name scheme that would be good but also uh i'm as i told i also want to bring something that is not just a simple name constructor but a double or triple name constructor. yeah uh, to, which which is perfectly reasonable considering that we're getting two potentially exclusive requirements if we do not do a double barrel name uh one of which is that they not be pithy and then the other sorry, what what is the requirement for not be pithy that seems that it's seems not, like it's not a requirement but it's a suggestion and i think it's good strategically for for all of us to to take apple's suggestions with with weight yeah uh, you know this so is from it, from mache it, who's like the the head of the the webkit team well, so I certainly the feature, let me let me just read okay. his comment. The feature sure. is likely to only be directly used by a narrow set of super experts. So it probably does not need a concise one word name if that name is cutesy metaphor. A longer, more descriptive name is likely to be better. So I, I do think that what 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 Leo is saying about a hierarchy is good. I uh, I think verse is probably too too short and uh confusing i think if we had you know something verse if it was two two words then that could that could be descriptive in the way that is being requested yeah there's also the possible so it's also possible that having a name that uses one word to imply the taxonomy and another word to imply the differentiation would be the best of both worlds like well, I mean, the nice thing about globe is it implies both global, but right? <laughs> you could call it a module globe if you wanted, um, uh, where yeah. that, or an intrinsic uh, an intrinsics world, or uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I suggest an arena or space for this, and we could have yeah, you know, we could have an intrinsic space or a global space or anything like that. Yeah, I, I really need to go. Um, yeah. yeah, we are over time. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you for the conversation.